One of the most important discoveries in modern biology occurred in the 1950s during a period that uh, uh, historians call the, the molecular biological revolution. We all know about Watson and Crick, 1953, they elucidate the structure of the DNA molecule, the beautiful double helix structure. Um, four years later, Francis Crick, who was, by the way, a code breaker in World War II, um, cracks the ultimate code, and he realizes that Along the spine of the double helix molecule, there are these four subunits, chemical subunits, and they're called nucleotide or nucleotide bases. And he postulates that the nucleotide bases are functioning like alphabetic characters in a written language or the digital characters that we use in computer code today, like zeros and ones, which is to say that the nucleotide bases are, they don't perform a biological function in, in virtue of their shape or of their um, the, the reactions that they are part of. It's not their chemical or uh, geometric properties that give them their function. It's their sequential arrangement in accord with an independent symbol convention, later discovered and now known as the genetic code. So we have genetic text interpreted by genetic code inside the cell. And Crick postulates that the information along the DNA molecule inscribed in essentially digital or alphabetic, or some have called it typographic form, is directing the synthesis of the crucial protein molecules that are needed to keep cells alive. It takes about eight years for his conjecture, his hypothesis, to be confirmed. It's not something that could be confirmed by one simple experiment. But by 1965, biologists on both sides of the Atlantic, in France, the UK, and the US, have figured out that Crick is pretty much right. And this is a mind-blowing stop-press moment in the history of biology because we essentially have what um, engineers now call CAD-CAM, computer-assisted design and engineering. If you go down the street from us here to the Boeing plant, you'll, have, you'll find engineers sitting at consoles writing code that is used to direct the construction of, say, an airplane wing, where the code directs where the rivets are placed on the wing. The same kind of technology, information technology, is at work in every cell of every living organism. That information, the information in the DNA molecule, is directing the construction of the proteins and protein machines that keep cells and organisms alive. So the ultimate question in the origin of life is the question of where does that information come from? Both in chemical evolutionary theory, where you're trying to explain the origin of the first cell, and Jim Tour writes about this persuasively, uh, about the problems of this theory persuasively in the book, in our book, but also in biological evolutionary theory, where we were trying to account for the origin of new forms of life from simpler pre-existing forms. If you want to give your computer a new function, you've got to give it new code, new software. The same thing turns out to be true in life. If you want to build a new form of life, you have to have new types of cells, new cells require new proteins, new proteins require new genetic information. And this is what neo-Darwinism really has a hard time explaining because if you rely on a random method of altering pre-existing code, which is what a mutation is, you're overwhelmingly more likely to degrade that information before you ever get to any new functional sequence or new information that's capable of building a new protein. When I ask this hypothetically to computer programmers, say, now if you take a section of code and you start randomly changing the zeros and ones, are you going to get a new operating system or a new program, or are you going to introduce bugs and glitches before you get there? And they, they get it right away. This is random changes in functional sequences of information is invariably destructive, and it's not, um, a, it's not a, a viable or credible mechanism a plausible mechanism for generating new forms of information. And yet that's what neo-Darwinism must repair to in this age of molecular biology. And so it's one of the reasons that the mechanism is seen as inadequate. And I have a whole chapter on this in the, in the, new, in the new book.